boys the outlet. What the hell is that in there? A bit of push fit. I mean, can you see that? There's a push fit coupling in there. Right. Get that. Where's the outlet? Outlet's here. Oh, do I want to risk touching that gate valve? Hi everyone, everyone, welcome back to this week's video. So a bit of a mixed bag for you guys. Got installs, got breakdowns, got a bit of this, bit of that, a bit of everything really. But today I've got Josh and V here. So Josh from Hamilton Plumbing Services. V, you can read his company name on his sweatshirt, Mono Plumbing. So we've just been doing a bit of work on my shed today. Well, me and V have, Josh was here for moral support. Turned up for the food. He's turned up for the food. So yeah, we've ordered Turtle Bay, Caribbean food. We're about to chow down. We're going to enjoy this meal. You guys enjoy this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Enjoy. All right, morning. It's me and Chris. Chris. Got a boiler installed today. What have we got coming out? Uh, we have got a Potterton Pro Max on its way at heat only. Yeah, and we've got a, a Baxi, Baxi 830. 830. So, sealed system, heat only swap. Should be pretty straightforward, but we've got three floors. Four floors. Four floors, okay, four floors above us. So. How many rads? 14 rads. 14. 14 rads. So let's see how bad the system is. I've got the power flush in the van. He's got the boiler. So let's get in, crack on and get started. So Chris is going to drop. What's the drop we got in there? Uh, we got a millibar drop. A millibar drop. Okay. Yeah. So it's permissible. Yeah. As long as there's no smell of gas. As long as after we've done the boiler, which is where? where where's the boiler? Where's the boiler? I'm guessing in here. This looks like a boiler cupboard. Bingo. Right, so that's going out there. Oh, got some rabbits here as well. Lunch. No, I'm joking. <laughs> so it looks like it's terminated just outside there. So we've got a plume kit to put in there to divert it away. Yeah, this is like this was, this conservatory was signed off in building rooms. Yeah. Okay, it's yeah. Tight, though, so we're gonna have to plume that up. So yeah, it looks like the boiler was here and then they put in the conservatory afterwards. Otherwise that flu wouldn't have been allowed how it is. Um, all right, cool. It's not the end of the world. The only thing we need to consider is the depth of the old boiler versus the new boiler because it's a side flu, not a rear exit flu. So, I think the new one is slightly shallower. So we'll have to see. We might have to break open the flue hole a bit. But yeah, it's draining down. This drop test is done. Let's get this one off and get started. Right, so we just finished taking the pressure off the system. Got to get the boiler off to the wall. We're not going to be power flushing this system because Chris has done a quick test in his turbidity tube, the water quality, and it is fairly clean. And not only that, it's microball, so not power flush and microball system. We will do just a mains flush. So we're going to get the boiler done. Then we've got a filling loop upstairs on the fourth floor in the airing cupboard. So just open up that filling loop, keep a drain off open downstairs, and then just let it all circulate around the system and blast around, uh, blast out through there. Or worst case, actually got a better idea. We can, because we've got a fit of magna clean here as well. I actually don't know where we're going to fit the f filter I can't actually see <laughs> where the flow and return pipes are coming from ah on the right hand side and they're 28 mil so the new one is on the left hand side so I'm going to try and get a filter in here as well somehow and yeah it's going to be a bit tight work out the flush afterwards First things first, let's try and get the boiler sorted. Right, so from here, I don't know how I'm going to be able to show this there. Right, so this is turning into a bit more of a tricky situation because these two 28 mils are just going straight into the wall. Obviously, we've got a false, false wall here, and we also need to make sure with the new boiler bracket as well that we don't hit anything in the wall. Uh, gas, where's the gas? Gas is also coming straight out the wall as well, which 
isn't ideal. I think we've just got to get the boiler off the wall first and then see what we can do with the pipe work, get the new one on, get the template up and then figure out what we can do from there. Yeah, step by step. It's not going to be as straightforward as we would have liked, unfortunately, not by the looks of it. So just taking the pressure off the system, so no more water coming out of there. Managed to undo the two 28mm connections, but we've got a little bit of play there on the return, but nothing on the flow. So we're just going to have to get the multi-tool and cut the pipes here just so that we can get the boiler off the wall in the meantime. And then these, we're definitely going to have to go into the wall and see what's going on there because we need to bring flow and returns to this side and it depends how high or low the boiler sits because we're going to have the tails coming up then we need to get back onto there and it's the other way around as well i believe on this one we've got the return yeah return flow i think it's the same way on this side actually i think the re no flow is on the left and returns on the right so they're flipped as well so that's going to be another little obstacle that we need to get over but first things first, we need to get this off the wall and then see where the new boiler is going to sit and then we can work out how best to rejig the pipe work. So I've had to do a bit of surgery here. So motor tooled, the flame returns off. So now we can at least get the boiler off the wall and then figure out what to do with these inside the wall here. All right, everything is disconnected as far as I can see. Let's uh, try and get this off the wall. Got a clear path for me to take it outside. Right, brackets on, sweated off the two 28mm elbows off there, so we'll probably get, I don't know how we're going to do it yet, but probably another two 28mm elbows with 22 reducers in, shooting this way. Sweat the gas off as well, now the gas is inside the wall and goes that way. So I've had to, normally where the boiler would have been centre, I've had to offset it a little bit so it's sitting slightly to the left, so it's going to clear that gas pipe so I can then bring that gas down up. Well me or Chris. Um, so now we're just going to get the boiler on the wall. I know that doesn't look level, but it is level. It's just the wall looks a bit off. So I'm just going to get the boiler in and then hopefully the flue will line up. Otherwise, I've got to break that out as well. One of them jobs. The yeah. Also, if you if anyone hasn't used these before, these are great for dot and dabbles, call fix, get them from screw fix. So you've got the red plug, you've then got the metal insert which, which goes into the plug, and then you've got the actual long screws as well, which then hold it all in place. So we've got dot and dabbles here. So perfect for this type of wall. Chris is doing some weightlifting with the boiler. <laughs> so he's about to get that on. Yeah. I've seen it somewhere you have a film. You film someone. Should be able to clear the surface. Yeah. Don't film that. I think this is going to clear it. Is it not? Nope. All right, let me have a look. Okay, so we're going to pipe it out first and sort the flue out afterwards because, as you can see, this flue sits a lot further forward and we can't physically bring the flue forward because the conservatory starts about here. So we're going to look at getting a 45, so maybe elbow 45 and then break open a little bit more at the back there to try and see us out. Flue's going to be the trickiest bit. I mean, we've got to get around this first. So this is how we're going to be doing the pipe. I've just mocked it up at the moment. So got two 28mm elbows coming off of there with a reducer straight into there. That goes straight into MagnaClean. We've tested it. We can fit the MagnaClean there and we can get the lid off. So happy days. And then obviously the flow will literally just come straight down with the Street 45 bang into there. So it's mocked up. Let's get it piped up. And then, well, once that's piped up, we can at least fill up the system 
uh, and then we can sort out what we're going to do with the flue. Right, we're piped up. Does look pretty, but yeah, that's where it is. We've got the two 28 elbows coming out the wall. I'm really hoping it doesn't leak because that is a real nightmare. It's a real pain in the backside to try and get onto those. But we're piped up in that regard. Chris is going to go upstairs because the filling loop annoyingly is on the top floor, which is the fourth floor. So he's going to go up. He's got walkie talkies in his van. So he's going to give me one. Here he is. You got the talkies? Uh, no. Oh, okay, cool. So he's going to go up. So he's going to give me a call. He's going to fill up. I'm going to stay down here and pray that all the solder joints are good. Cool. Right, let's do it. Okay, so far so good. All right, Chris is calling me from upstairs. Oh no, call's ended. Yeah, we're about a bar of pressure and there's no leaks on our connections above the boiler. So I think it's looking good. Chris, what sort of, what sort of pressure are we at? Yeah, one and a half bar. Bar and a half, sweet. So no leaks here, which is good. It's gonna go around bleeding all the rads, um, get the system filled up and then sort out the gas and then sort out the flue. Okay, so we're all fully piped up. Gas is done as well, wired up. Literally everything's done. Just got to sort the flue out now, which is going to be the biggest headache. So we've got, Chris has picked up a couple of 45. So we're going to try to do elbow 45 and see where it lines up out there. The other, the other issue is there wasn't much we could do with the 28 mil, but where it's sticking out the wall, I hope that doesn't get in the way of the flue as well. But we'll see. We'll try and make heads or tails of it, see what we can work out. Don't ask me how, but we managed to get away with just a standard elbow. I think because the hole is quite big, we had a bit more play on it. So if it was tight, then we would have been snookered. But because the hole is quite big, we had a bit of play. So it's actually has gone straight out. And Chris is just sorting out the plume kit part of it there now. So he's just going to get that done. And I'm going to have a little tidy up because other than that, everything's done. I'll put the filter on, then we can start doing the mains flush and then commission and get out of here. Just like that, we're done. So this unit, we have put it back on, but it is easily removable. It's just a couple of screws. So when it comes to getting the front, the bottom panel off, it's easily done. Boiler's fired up. You can see we've got the two green lights on there. So it's all firing up, running sweet as it should. Got the filter in there, flue went straight out, fits in the cupboard, job done. I'm out of here. Chris has already left, he had to go pick his kids up. So, which is fair enough, I said I'll um, hang about, just did the final bits, had a little clear up, added an inhibitor into the system, and we're out of here. Got some breakdowns to do now, let's go get them. Right, back at this one. So I'm going to be changing over that lock shield and swapping this out for an EPH CP4B. So I'm not, you guys know, I don't drain systems out. Taking the pressure off the boiler, just drain it out from there. And then I've isolated the flow and return. So that will stop any air getting into the system. And now it's like creates a vacuum or it's sort of like bunging the FNE tank if it's an open vent system. And now I should be able to swap that Lock shield out without too much water. Let's get to it. Right, that lock shield swapped over. Amazing water quality. And that was snapped shut. So, yeah, I can really feel the heat that's come in from there transferring into the rad already, even though I've not even filled it up yet. So I'm gonna sort out the stat first and then fill up the boiler and test it all. So this old stat that I'm taking out is a two wire stat. So it's just got a common and switch live. So if you're gonna be replacing one of these, you need to make sure you get a battery operated room thermostat. Perfect example is this EPH CP4B. So this again, just works on a two wire connection and then you have batteries in for the display. So. I'll get that out, show what it looks like, and then we'll get it fitted into here. Ugh, flatheads, might have to swap those out. 
So on the old one, you've got A and B. So A is your common, B is your switch. On the EPH, you've got number one is your switch live and number three is your common. So it's kind of back to front a little bit, but yeah, it's got the wiring diagram on the back. So number three is going to be your common. So that red is going to go into number three and then the yellow from there is going to go into number one. And the holes, they line up, I think. Yeah, they do line up. So I'll probably just swap those out for some proper posi screw heads if I can be bothered to go to back to the van. So there we go. Just to make it clear for anyone who hasn't done these before, common goes into number three and your core goes into number one. Now, a good thing about these EPH stats is you can actually use them on open therm as well. So if it was wired into open therm into the boiler, then you could use these two terminals as well. But we're just working straight off the mains. And now that literally will just clip on like so. He says. So make sure yeah, it's clipped in. And then just pop the batteries in. And that will start working as soon as I power on the boiler. I'll get that done in a minute. All right, there we go. EPH CP4B is on the wall. Now, just got to add some pressure back into this system. Let's open up the flow returns. Where is it gone? And the filling loop. Uh, it's got that one. So I'll turn that and turn that. All right, let's let that repressurize and then I'll check that rad valve as well. Make sure that's all okay. That pressure's starting to rise, which is always a good sign. Otherwise, we might have a leak somewhere, which we don't want. There can only be one leak, and it'll be my work, which hopefully it's not. So let that get up to bar and a half, then turn it on, fire it on. Most importantly, make sure that rad's getting hot now as well. All right, boiler is on. Let's give it a demand. Let's turn it up to 30. It's clicked there. Way. I've wired it correctly. That's always a, a good sign. So now just going to let the heating run. I'm going to check, make sure, most importantly, make sure that radiator is getting hot. And then we're out of here. All right, call outs are coming in thick and fast. So I've got a Worcester, which wasn't giving any heating. Hot water's working fine. Oh, hang on. British gas, knock knock, no one's home. Tell you what, let's get it replaced with an EPH CP4 and a customized flap. Get this elderly lady some heating back up and running. Right, so taking the back plate off, obviously we've got live, we've got neutral and another neutral. That's probably coming from the fuse spur and then going back to the boiler, I'm guessing. And number one here is going to be our common. Let's have a look on here. Number one is going to be our common. Number three is going to be our call. So literally we've just got wireless in the same way into the EPH stat. I'll probably just put a Wago on for the earth because there's no earth terminal inside the EPH stats. Have I got a Wago on me? Oh, don't tell me I've got back to the van just to get two way Wago. I might have one in my bag. But yeah, literally, neutral, live, common, call, done. Let's get it wired in. Right, so the way I'm doing this wiring is because there's a lot going on here, there's a number of different cables. I'm just using Wagos to basically get all, all of the grouped cables together into three-way Wagos. And then I just want to have one cable coming out of each Wago, which then, as it feeds through here, I should only have one cable in the neutral, live, common, and call. So it just makes the wiring side a little bit easier. Otherwise, I'm trying to feed. I've got some rigid cable, I've got some flex, so it would have been a bit difficult to try and maneuver everything through. And obviously, it's only a small gap there. So this way, it just makes it a little bit easier. I've only just got one cable each, so I've got my live, neutral, live, my common, and my call. So that's my four cables coming through. Earth has been waygoed in the back there. The lives have all been waygoed together and the neutrals have been waygoed together. So let's bring that through, connect it all up and retest it. 
Right, we're all wired up. Let's pop the fuse in. Power on. That's a good sign. Boilers come on. Now, I'm going to give it a second because it's usually going to preheat first, I think. Is it doing it? No. Okay, that's fine. So now we can test this. So it's showing 19.3 at the moment. Let's turn it up to 20. That should go green in a minute. Click. Diverter's going over. Pump's running. Oh, we have flame. Now, the most difficult part. Does the customer want this on the wall or do they want it on the stand so they can move it around? Let's find out. Right, let's make this the last one of the day. Got a set of rad valves to change, but it's an upper vent system. So I've got to get up into the loft, bung it, and I've got myself ERV, EPH, TRV, and lock shield set. So I'm gonna just swap both of them over so it's a matching set. Let's get it done. Okay. All right, let's have a look at this loft. F and oh, massive loft. Uh, F and tanks there. I think we're gonna have to crawl around this way to get to it. Oh, at least it's nice and boarded. I've got to worry about walking over, dress and stuff. Boop, 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 boop. Right, F and tank located. Where's the outlet? What the hell is that in there? A bit of push fit. Can you see that? There's a push fit coupling in there. Right. Forget that. Where's the outlet? Outlet's here. Oh, do I want to risk touching that gate valve? Hell no. I'd rather just get my hand in there and bung it. I can't actually see where the outlet is. It looks like it's there. Must be around there. I've just got to get my hand in there. Yeah, I can see it. It's literally just there. Right, let me get that bunged. Right, they're both changed. I'm going to get the bungs out and then make sure everything gets hot. Fingers crossed. All right, heating's on. I heard it gurgling as soon as the pump came on. Ah, bloody hell, that's got hot quick. Yeah, can't keep my hand on it. Well, it's another job done, and that's three for three on EPH products. I had a CP4B, which is a battery-operated programmable room thermostat. I had the CP4, which was a wireless programmable room thermostat, and I had the EMTRV15, which is their TRV and lock shield set. So yeah, I love the products. They do make quality products and I use them wherever I can. Great choice. Yeah, nice and hot. Now I can go home. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Take care now and I'll see you soon.